Hey everyone, you're watching Build Series in New York City. I'm your host, Laura Moraski from HuffPost. As the longtime keyboardist for Journey, Jonathan Cain co-wrote some of the band's biggest hits, included Don't Stop Believing and Faithfully. Now he's telling the story behind his 36-year career in the memoir, Don't Stop Believing, the man, the band, and the song that inspired a generation. Everyone, please welcome Jonathan Cain. Thanks, Lauren. Oh, thank you for coming by, Bill, today. We're so excited to have you here. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. And on the eve of your, your book publishing, yes. you know, tomorrow's coming out. Good timing. Good timing. Amen. <laughs> we have lots to talk about. Uh -huh. This has been in the works for quite some time. Yes. Um, I started about eight years ago uh, on a laptop, and uh, I must have wrote that first chapter eight times. Wow. You know? Yeah. Because... Um, and then I got some really great editors to help me with my grammar and punctuation and all that. And still, it wasn't coming together right, you know. And uh, so just a lot of trial and error. Um, and it took the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to get it right. Yeah. What, what was about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame last year? That it was really... the correct intro. Yeah, yeah. I always wanted something to, to bring the reader into, you know, something to draw them into the book. And standing on the stage that day or that night, uh, made me see, ah, this is it. This is how we're going to begin, you know, my memoir. And so I really needed that event to take place. And there was such uh, a feeling of brotherhood and unity up there with all the alumni from Journey, yep. uh, past, present, you know, Arnell, Steve, yep. Neil, everybody. Um, it was just, it was a natural thing to do. Was it emotional that night? It was. You're standing there. Uh, because of the fans. Yeah. And it hits you, you know. It's like, wow, all these fans put me here, you know. And, uh, and of course, God. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, and I thanked him that yeah. night, too. Oh. Well, you know, Steve Perry was there that night. Yes. And, and I know you kick off the book talking about Steve and right. actually Steve's departure from the band and how that affected you. Mm. It seems like it's still something that, you know, rings, you know, affects you to this day. Well, yeah, he, you know, he was uh, such a... A, a, a force, you know, and I had no idea when I, I sat down to write with him for the first time that we were going to end up being that that partnership, that Lennon McCartney kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. where everything. I don't think I sat down and ever wrote a bad song with him, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he just had a spirit about him. We had a spirit of brotherhood. He didn't have a brother, you know, so I felt like, you know, he he might have felt like we had this brotherhood, you know, and Neil's an only child as well. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I became their brother, you know, during that time. What do you recall about the audition process for Journey? There wasn't any. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Uh, You're just like, I'm playing. This is it. Well, no, yeah. I was in the babies. Anybody remember the yeah. babies? Uh, and we did a tour with them. And unbeknownst to me, uh, they were planning on replacing the keyboard player. And they saw me playing guitar and co-writing all those songs. They loved our album, Union Jacks. Mm -hmm. They loved my playing. And uh, I was it, I guess. And so I got a phone call the summer uh, 1980. You know, we want you to come up and make an album with us. And I dropped the phone on the floor. I'm like, you're kidding. Um, but what a blessing. And so I packed all my stuff and with the ex-wife, and we went up to uh, San Francisco and started, uh, you know, writing this album with a band I hardly played a note with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, it was magical, I imagine. It, well, and, and, and my yeah. father had always prophesied this sort of move would happen. He said, there's going to be a sudden, a suddenly in your life where you're, you're not even going to believe how great it's going to happen for you, you know. And season is coming. Just hang on, you know, as I was starving in Hollywood. Um, Wondering where my next check was going to come from. Sure. The no, no, not wondering anymore after mm. that, right? Mm. Uh, don't Stop Believing Your Dad was a, a part of that. Oh, uh, my gosh. I know that, I, of course, I want to talk about that song, but just yeah. talk a little bit about how well, your I, dad was influencing. I hope that the dads that read this book, this memoir, uh, will get inspired and uh, will encourage their children and recognize that each child has a gift. You know, there is something that's special about that you can encourage them to follow like my father saw the music thing with me right mm -hmm. and you know my dog got hit by a car and I was in Hollywood and I had to pay the vet bill and luckily they saved her life and uh, he uh, I had to call him for some money to, for another loan <laughs> and I hated calling my dad for a loan and so I said dad should I just give up on this thing and come home you know 
seems like I might be uh, pushing it to Chicago. Maybe I come back home. No, no, don't come home. Stick to your guns. Don't stop believing. And I went, okay. So everything he would say to me, somehow I would just kind of doodle in my little notebook that I wrote songs in. So that's basically what happened. He had said to me, don't stop believing. And I, I took it to heart. And uh, I, I stood, you know, stood there and he sent me the money and um, great things started to happen. You know, the babies. And I called him. I said, Dad, I'm in the babies. He said, it's just a stepping stone. There's something huh. greater. I'm like, but Dad, yeah. trust me. And then, of course, Journey happened. And when uh, I went up to make the Escape album, Steve Perry asked me, is there, a, is there another idea sitting around? Because we need one more song. And when I looked in the back of the Spiral Notebook, there was Don't Stop Believing. And I thought, you know, Steve Perry would sing this if I could bring in a chorus of some kind. And maybe we'll, we did. So I, br I wrote this chorus, and I brought it in. And all of us together finished the song in a room. It was magical. Did you know at the time that it was magical? I mean, of mm. course, we know the song now is, you know, ever. You could feel something yeah. going on. You know, I, I, I think when we finally heard the final mix, uh, Neil looked at me and he said, there's something special about this, John. And I was like, let's make it the first song on the album because it sounds like it, it draws a listener in. You know, let's make it track one. So that's how we sequenced the album. And um, from that point on, you know, I don't think it was a huge hit. It, it got radio play, but we were up against Michael Jackson, you know, who was just on fire at that time. It was hard to, to get any great, uh, uh, chart positions, you know, like where you could be number one, you know. Although it did help make the Escape album number one. Got it. So the, the album it was selling at around 250,000 units a week when it first came out. Unbelievable. I mean, just those numbers are staggering today, you know? Yeah, mm. amazing. And had a resurgence, of course. It's seeped into a lot of our pop culture, mm. and especially with Sopranos. Well, yeah, you know, Rock of Ages picked it up you know, for the Broadway musical, and I thought that was interesting because it was about sex, drugs, and rock and roll in the 80s, mm -hmm. and I had written about it in the 70s. So in 10 years, nothing really had changed, except a lot more sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> um, and uh, then, of course, uh, Glee. Yep. Uh, I think on the heels of Rock of Ages, they saw the way it worked in the show, you know, the way it, it was the big finale. And it made sense that they do their own version of it, which I thought was pretty creative. And uh, it gets nominated for a Grammy, you know. So it's like Thomas the Train that keeps chugging along, you know. <laughs> I can't get rid of it. Yeah. No, but it's one of those songs that's everywhere. I mean, whether it's at a wedding or a party, it's, you know. And Arnell Pineda, of all yeah. people, our, yeah. lead, our lead singer for 12 years now, um, comes, comes up uh, a poor homeless kid, loses his mom when he's very young. Um, everything goes wrong uh, for him. And uh, he's told he can't sing anymore. The voice is gone. And somehow, you know, he picks himself up, uh, starts singing, joins a band, becomes a success on the islands, raises enough money to support his dad and his brothers. Who should be singing that song but him right now? Yeah. So, yeah. and I think it's fitting. Yeah, and you un uncovered him on YouTube. Neil did, yeah. 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 Neil, Neil Sean yeah. found Arnell. My brother had this great idea. He said, you should look on YouTube uh, because they really can't fake it too much when they're singing live, you know. And so we started looking to the different, you know, tribute bands, and we're like, oh, that's scary. It's a little too scary, you know, they're wearing the tails, and one guy even looked like Steve Perry, you know. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, creepy, you know. So when Arnell came, uh, found when, when Neil found Arnell, I realized it was in Manila, you know, and it's so far away. How are we going to get him into the States with all this Homeland Security, you know, being tightened down, and does he even speak English, yeah. you know? And, uh, and when, they, when Neil finally called him, Arnell didn't believe it. You're not Neil, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> I am. And now and all I'm these asked, years later. And it took like two months to get him to the, to, uh, to the States, you know? And uh, he, had, he had never been to the States for the audition, so he's a little nervous and couldn't sleep, and took him several days to acclimate to the sleep patterns. I didn't know this until I went to Manila for a concert, you know, uh, and I found out, wow, this is hard. Yeah, <laughs> It's yeah. hard. To, by 4 o'clock, you're, <laughs> you know, you're sleeping. 
hard to stay awake at four o'clock in the afternoon. So I, I know what he went through. Yeah, and now twelve years later, I mean, you're still rocking. You know you're going what? On tour it, this summer, he acclimated yeah. so well. Now he comes, he bounces in. He's uh, he's fine within a day or two. Yeah. And uh, I told him, I said, it's like a muscle. You know, when once you start traveling, you'll you'll fall into it. And uh, I'm so proud of him. He's done so well. That's great. A touring this summer with Def Leppard. With Def You're Leppard. picking off the tour soon, May, right? Yeah, Next. yeah. We we just finished rehearsals. Um, starting this little book tour I'm about to embark on. And, um, you know, we're excited to uh, be back with the Def Leppard guys. We played with them 12 years ago. Um, so should be a really great night of music. That's awesome. Now, you, I mean, we're talking about Don't Stop Believing because you wrote that song, but you co-wrote quite, there's so many uh, hits. I mean, I'm thinking about Faithfully, which is a, a song that you co-wrote. Uh, I, I wrote by you wrote myself. That, yeah, you wrote that by yourself, and that's a very personal song, I'm sure, at the time about being on the road. Can you talk yes. a little bit about the inspiration behind that? Yeah, Faithfully, um, I was so grateful, um, you know, being called to change the sound of Journey and to actually be in the band and be treated as an equal member, that um, we had 70 people on the road with us, you know, and I would watch them take down the big stage. I had just come from a band that wasn't so fortunate. You know, the babies were business-wise in trouble, not doing so well financially. But here we are with this successful crew and everything, and I thought, wouldn't it be neat if we had a song that we could all send home like a postcard uh, to help bridge a distance? We all, we all missed our loved ones. We all pay a price for that road life that we live. What if we had a song that um, everybody could say, wow, that's, that's about us? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be great? You know, in our community, because we have a community that travels on the road. Um, there, there's, you know, the truck drivers, um, the riggers. They're, it's like a circus out there. And it hit me, circus life under the big top world. And uh, so I began writing uh, on the bus, highway run into the midnight sun, wheels go around. You're on my mind, and uh, I fell asleep. It was on a napkin. I woke up the next morning in the city. I was in Saratoga Springs, and I knew what the song was. Restless heart, sleep alone tonight, wondering where I am without you, you know. And just boom, boom, boom. Uh, 30 minutes later, it was done. And uh, it was really a Holy Spirit moment, you know. I, I had never written a song that supernaturally quick. Huh. Um, I have to give all credit to God on that one. Is there another song from Journey that, you know, really stays with you to this day that's like that we haven't talked about? I mean, I know we talked about two big hits, but I know you, you co wrote Open Arms too, right? People always ask me, like, what's the one song yeah. that wasn't a hit? Right? Yeah. Uh, I wrote a song on the Arrival album that Steve O'Jerry sang called Love By You that, um, to me, is one of the most underrated you know, un, sort of unsung songs of mine that uh, I, I have a real soft spot in my heart for. And someday, you know, somebody will cover it and it'll be a hit. Yeah, there you That's, go. You know, it's it's out there. <laughs> but uh, I actually You're found it. You're watching right now. I found it on the Internet, and somebody had brought it up and said, um, you know, the most unappreciated Journey song, Love By You. So. All right, so it might get some traction. Maybe. I maybe. mean, look what happened with Don't Stop Believing." I mean, how many years, how many years well, later is that? Well, we have so many songs. I know. You know, yeah. and... Um, we, we have been so blessed uh, with a catalog. We're probably 40 different songs we could play every night, you know. But we try to make uh, those dirty dozen, we call them, uh, you know, stay in our set. We understand that people uh, have approved those songs, you know, and, and it takes so many years to win the fans' approval. Uh, they voted for these songs. Make them number one, you know, top ten, you play them. Yeah. Mm. It's an interesting how many iterations of Journey there have been through oh. the years. Uh, you know, we're just talking, we talked about, obviously, you know, with Steve, and there's some, been some in between, and now, you, you know, your latest iteration. With Darnell, yeah, yeah. it's like a, like a football team changes a quarterback, you know. I thought, well, when, how are the 49ers going to go on without Joe Montana? Yeah. Well, Steve Young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't do so bad, he won a Super Bowl. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, what do you think it is that, you know, keeps you going day to day, mm. Mm. and also... Um, you know, th there's been some t tough times, too, about yeah. this whole thing. Sure, sure. You know? It's a family. Um, you know, there's going to be problems, you know, in any relationship. Um, but I think what keeps the, us going is uh, the the songs. Mm -hmm. the, mu the music that we wrote had has sort of a timelessness to it. We wrote good songs uh, with good melodies and our fans. 
you know, and, and we have great management behind us, keep us, you know, headed in the right direction. But I think we do it for the fans. I mean, from the very first time I heard Journey and saw Journey, and I wasn't even in the band, I recognized the fans. Ah, they love these guys. Huh. They love this music, you know. And I was quick to recognize that, you know. Um, and I think that's still part of our success. And, and not to mention all the people in radio, you know, in, in the record business, you know, Sony, Columbia, that, that helped lift the band up through those years. You get very specific in this book. Mm. Was it hard or to remember some of those specific instances? Did you keep a journal at all through your life? You know, I, I remembered a lot of it. Um, there, there was certain, you know, we wanted to go back and make sure we had the years right, so we looked it up on the internet. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, they actually have our set list. Huh, uh, yeah. Like when we played uh, in Tokyo in 1981, I found a set list. Somebody has it out there, you know. It's remarkable. Um, so all of the facts, you know, cross-checked on the internet, you know, and of course, um, I spoke to our manager, Herbie, who's like a, 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 a fountain of information. He'll remember everything. And it's so funny because I got to see him after the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nice. by accident in the restaurant uh, for breakfast. And we must have spoke for 40 minutes huh. about the old days. Yeah. And just how, how crazy it was that, you know, Steve Perry was to come into this band and how, you know, it was just some guy that was selling some weed somewhere, had a tape and gave it to Herbie and Herbie got the tape and, you know, it was Steve Perry. Yeah. You know, I mean, what? Uh, and then how I end up, you know, being his, you know, co-writer with Neil. And you just go, that's just profound. And if that's just, I feel like it's God's work, you know. Do you, what's your relationship like with Steve these days? You know, uh, last time I saw him was in the Hall of Fame. We, he, he lives a very private life. Mm -hmm. And it chooses to, you know, just keep it that way. So Whenever I see him at these events, he, he seemed very, very happy, uh, content with his life. Um, I know he's gone through some troubles, like we all have, but, but he's moved on. He seemed very, very uh, vibrant and, uh, and proud yeah. to be standing there with us. And shout out to Arnell. Arnell got to be with him, uh, one of his idols, you know, you can imagine. You know, it's a funny story that, uh, Ar Arnell used to always tell me, uh, those are big shoes to fill, you know? Yeah. And so I'd say, Arnell, bring your own shoes, you know? <laughs> you got to bring your own shoes now. Sure. <laughs> and so uh, I have a friend at Nike who had a pair of Steve Perry's uh, Nike sneakers, the white ones with the yeah, swoosh, yeah. that he never, he never got. He, they, he never, they, they couldn't find out where to send them. So they just stayed there at the, at, at the, at the shop. And um, he said, I'm, I'm going to um, ship these to Arnell. And they were Arnell size, <laughs> size six, tiny feet, size six. Arnell wore them uh, for a couple of the shows this year, you know. And uh, it's ironic. That's fake, God has right? a sense of humor. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Are you currently writing new music? Do you do I it on, am. yeah? I okay. am, yes. Uh, I actually wrote a new song for this book. Um, it's called The Songs You Leave Behind. There's a CD coming out uh, on iTunes. Uh, in the audio book, there are many songs about my life that, that appear you know, kind of in and out of the book. And so there's a full CD coming, uh, The Songs You Leave Behind. It's going to be the name of it, looks like that. Be looking for it I on iTunes. And uh, I'm working on a new praise and worship album, uh, which will be out. Uh, the end of the year, and uh, starting to write some new Journey songs. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you think to write some Journey songs? Mm. Are you guys thinking about that? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So maybe an album or something down the line. I hope so. All right. That's good. That'll be great. You, um, you know, in the book as well, you talk about your personal life. I mean, you, you recently remarried. Mm -hmm. I mean, was it difficult to sort of like put that on, on paper? Because, you know, you get a little personal there about your kids. Yes. And... Yes. Uh, I, I learned a lot from, from Paula, my wife, who, who's a pastor, about being transparent, mm -hmm. tell your truths. I learned from my son to tell your truths. My son, you know, went through a tough rehab, uh, and watching him struggle through that taught me that uh, the transparency is, is the best way, you know, for a man to walk, um, especially if you're going to tell a book. And if you're going to live a life, you know, in God, 
then you want to be transparent and you want to tell your testimony. Um, because I feel as a Christian, um, how am I going to win people's hearts to God if I don't tell the truth? Uh, so that's, that was part of my goal that it's never too late to return if, if you do have a love for him. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for me, I was you know, going to be a priest when I was seven. So God has a sense of humor that he, he says, now marry this preacher, Paula. <laughs> and uh, so she's taught me a lot about truth and honesty and, and how to walk in the light of the Lord. Your music has meant so much to so many people. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, Journey's legacy is going to be? I hope it's one that, you know, people, it will make people smile, give hope, um, bring their family uh, together. Uh, Don't Stop Believing is a song about giving permission to dream. And so if, if we can keep the love alive, keep, dream, keep people hugging and kissing, loving and touching, <laughs> forever yours faithfully, we're doing a pretty good thing. I love that. All right. On that note, let's get some questions from the audience. Sure. Hi. This is going to be an online question. Um, Steve uh, would like to know, did you send Steve Perry a copy of the book, and has he commented on it? He is not, and I, I plan on sending him a copy. Absolutely, yeah. Great. Thanks. Who's next? Oh, right here. Uh, what is the secret to creative process of songwriting and uh, how inspiration comes to you? Is it the, the lyrics, uh, lyrics first or music first? And the... It's both ways. Uh, for me, uh, it's usually, uh, I like to write about crossroads. So if you have a, you're at a crossroad in your life, you have to make a decision. Um, the, and you have this moment of clarity. That, that's usually it. You know? So no matter if, if you're in love or you're, you're thinking about a generation or you're thinking about a, a sad moment in your life or a breakthrough in your life where all of a sudden you have this newfound hope, um, it usually comes uh, for me in a title. I will get a title in my head, you know, like open arms. And I'll just sit down and I'll try to create the atmosphere where I think I can locate the listener, you know. So we have to be like great architects and create a beautiful opening room, a foyer, and you walk in, and there's the living room, and now you want to stay. And you want to see the rest of the house, don't you? So we, ha we have to be designers with our lyrics and our melody so that they're inviting, that invite people in. So we try to build a place that is comfortable, um, in a safe and a loving place, you know? So that's what I try to create in my music. Very cinematic. I feel I'm a big movie fan. And so my lyrics and music are cinematic. Great. All right, we have another question in the crowd here. Hi. Um, Hi. So since uh, Don't Stop Believing is such a cultural phenomenon of a, of a song uh, that practically never aged. Like, I just heard it in a trailer for a new movie last week. Um, I was wondering, uh, throughout the years, have you ever experienced fatigue over your own song? In the same way how <laughs> other artists are always hearing that one song that you just can't shake off after a while? Um, I don't ever get tired of it. No, I don't. I mean, for me, uh, it's an honor to have a song that's loved by three, four generations now. So you have to respect it. Anybody that gets tired of a song is, is working off their own ego, you know? So when we're in Journey, we check our egos at the door, huh? and we, we respect what we created and what people have approved, and that's why we continually, faithfully play them uh, with respect. Yes. Awesome. Well, we're glad for it, and we're glad that you came by, Bill, Thank today. Uh, touring the summer with Def Leppard. Mm. The book is out tomorrow. Give it up one more time for Jonathan Cain, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much.